Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information. The Troglodytes Guitar Show, it's time for our weekly Mod Collection Demo Shop Update. This time, the Mod Collection. Some interestingly colorful stuff, some interestingly modified things, and, you know, just pretty much more of the same. Let's go ahead and check this out. Starting off, it's time to taste the rainbow. They had a group of 670s explorers that they needed to do something interesting with, so this is what they came up with. Rainbow red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. How tasty. And these were offered at a premium. So at first glance, it just looks like, okay, they swapped out pick guards to make them look purple, they swapped out the knobs to match whatever color that they were going for it, and they did a matching headstock. Okay. And if you really zoom in here, it looks like they also numbered each of these. But then when you flip it over to the back, you can see they actually gave them all a certain fade finish. Like, it encapsulates about 80% of the neck right here, except for right here at the heel joint. I wasn't particularly a huge fan of this series, but I enjoy seeing different colors being used. My biggest thing is that a lot of these colors were a little bit too similar. Like, the red and the orange, the pickguards almost look exactly the same within these photos. We needed a bit more of a vibrant orange, I think. Yellow and green almost look the same to me. There's definitely a lot more attractive shades of green out there. But blue and purple, I would say they did okay with. But if nothing else, the colored headstocks really help bring that Gibson Mother of Pearl logo out. Because normally, they don't shine as bright. Next up, we had not one, not two, but three Les Paul Customs that got a little bit country. So looking at the back, these are nothing fancy, but they were individually numbered one out of five. I say that surprisingly because we only saw three of them this week, so maybe a couple more will show up. But they had an interesting design sprayed on them that kind of reminds me of like an SJ200's pickguard. But then look at the pickup layout. Telecasters. Now this looks pretty okay from far away, but I'm guessing this is another one of those ones where you get it in person, it's probably not going to look that good, because this wasn't specifically routed for the Telecaster style pickups. Those are just large plastic conversion plates. However, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to document a Les Paul custom done up like a telly, so I decided to buy number one for a review and demo. We'll see it in a week or two. Because I figure, worst case scenario, somebody hates this. They could always convert it back to a humbucker Les Paul, and then they just have an interesting cowboy motif going on. But the whole thing that makes a telly sound like a telly is generally the bridge mounting plate, so I'll be interested to see how that one sounds. They were initially offered at 4800 and I was actually kind of surprised how fast they could sell through three of those. All the designs were the same on all of them, but number two had some paint blemish issues on it. Next up, we have a 60s standard done up in aquamarine satin. It's a nice looking finish. It kind of reminds me of like late 2010s era standards. But we're seeing the return of them putting designs on pickup covers, but this time it looks gold. So I wonder if they're just stenciling that and then spraying it in like a gold finish or something. The back is beautifully plain, and the top has that nice ocean blue color. It was interesting. Offered at 2800 But check out this weird SG special. Called Saddle Brown, they put an acoustic guitar bridge on it. Which, I'm not gonna lie, I've always wanted to see this get done on an electric guitar just because it's so not necessary. And in fact, this one is extra unnecessary. So normally this is a wrap tail piece, right? It looks like they did one of those conversions on it. So it now has an ABR1 on it. But we technically have two bridges on this because acoustic guitars, they get this glued onto the top. And then this part right here acts as your bridge. So I think this is just here for cosmetic reasons. But now you have to use bridge pins on an electric guitar. So I was looking at the rest of this and yeah, they kind of like browned it over up here. It's got some sort of a wooden truss rod cover. Looks like somebody accidentally covered up the eye in Gibson with their new brown paint. But then I didn't even realize they did this. For some reason, I thought that saddle would just give it enough room that they could like do a string through thing. Maybe those are just faux pins. But no, they made it a string through SG, which those do exist like the SGZ series. But on a special like this, that was an interesting piece. It sold pretty quickly at 1600. Next up, we have a 59 Les Paul Standard reissue. I don't know about you guys, I thought that was an absolute screaming deal. 4,800 bucks. This is from the 2019 60th anniversary year of the R9. You zoom in, it's a beautiful two-piece flame maple top here. No pick guard installed from the factory. Some guys are going to dig that. It's got awesome wood grain. It's got the aged hardware that you would only find on a mod collection guitar. Well, at least that heavily aged. The back doesn't have the ridiculous red staining, so I don't think the binding bleed will be too bad on this example. And you've got awesome wood grain. I mean, like, the only thing I hate that they did to this thing is they gave it the Les Paul Jr. style button tuners, which just ruins everything for me. But you can easily replace those if you really need to, or just replace the whole tuners if it's that big of a deal for you. But I wanted to see that in person, so we'll unbox that thing on the show. I picked it up. 
because look at that even a great weight 8.6 pounds I know there's some guys that won't buy over eight pounds. Anything under nine is really good in the historics for me personally. Check this thing out though, 339 holographic cotton candy. It's got some red and it's got some blue. So I'm betting this thing started red and then they kind of just gave it a transparent blue metallic finish. So as you shine this in the light, it'll turn blue. But then they gave it a B5 Bigsby. We've got the high performance knobs going on. I really like that headstock in this photo. And then you look on the back and they actually tried to do more of a burst job around the edges, a little bit on the neck, but still left the center a normal color. And then you've got some of that going on here. It almost looks alien in form at this point. I'm sure somebody will enjoy that. The 61 standard SG, there's not too much going on here. Looks like a tortoiseshell pick guard, replaced pickup covers, and a really aged Gibson Maestro unit with the BFG style knobs. And it, oh, it's a satin finish. Okay. I dig that on an SG standard because somebody's going to like that. Satin finishes are great for players, and it's hard to find a full fledged SG done up in that. Kind of an interesting 335 with one of those finger tail pieces that we talked about in this episode right here. A custom shop 57 Les Paul Jr an interestingly modified SG base that received an extra pickup and some other modifications that we've seen before. But this right here was the third one I wanted to buy this week, but unfortunately somebody got to it before me. So I'll give you a second. What makes this interesting besides their unique finish? Right up here. This was a 125th anniversary one. Now this isn't as rare as the 125th anniversary Supreme, but it's part of that whole same series. So here's what that thing initially looked like. So it had a nice, you know, autumn burst like finish. They had that interesting inlay on the headstock. I mean, as far as a 335 limited edition goes, I mean, it's not that fantastic. It just has an interesting headstock. But this kind of beat up blemished one is being listed at 4,500. So to see this beautiful Eye of Neptune version one for not too much more was pretty enticing. But then when you flip it over to the back, they gave it a purple neck for some reason too. So that's kind of an exotic one. But since this was technically one of those 125th anniversaries, I could see this particular one becoming collectible in itself in the future. Since all the other ones were that autumn burst finish. But that's going to do it for the mod collection. Let's check out the demo shop. Just a whole bunch of players grade stuff this week. Nothing too crazy. They did another mass listing of the ebony finished guitars. If you're looking for a better deal on those, I have been getting some reports that if you watch the listing, they will be sending out automatic offers that are a little bit less than their asking prices because they have so many of them. Generally, the demo shop doesn't budge at all, so that was kind of big news when I heard that. So naturally, I looked through all the black ones looking for the worst blemishes. And this custom, I mean, it wasn't too bad, but on the back here, there was a really strange area right here. That's not a reflection. That appears to have been like some sort of like a touch-up area that they call light witness marks in heel region. So not quite sure what that's about. And then this 68 reissue, which is an absolutely gorgeous guitar, had the finish just completely flake off right here by the nut. The 60th anniversary SG Les Paul, it seemed like a fair price at first glance. Those white finishes always throw off the white balance of your cameras, it's annoying. But it actually has a pretty ugly looking finish crack right here. It looks to me like they had to replace the entire nut on this one. Like maybe there was some light cracking right here that made it not first quality. So they just knocked out the entire nut and then put it in without any finish over top of it to try to fix that. But then they must have got a finish check up the side in that process. Poor Gibson. That's why changing a nut on a Gibson is kind of stressful. But check this thing out, a 64-335 in Aspen White. I mean, it almost looks like a 335 Studio. You can't even tell it has binding anymore. And that's what makes it cool because it does have binding on it. It's just the same color as the guitar. So it reminds me of those late 80s Les Paul standards in white that age over like this. It's an acquired taste, but it's kind of cool. Those were the available listings at the time of recording. Here's what sold. This Les Paul Tribute, they gave it gold hardware. And in that process, they kind of made it look like a higher end Les Paul Studio. I mean, Tribute's technically grade slightly below a studio, but this one just exudes elegance. You don't see the double cut custom shop juniors in the demo shop every day, but the mods they did to this one, no, no, fire whoever did that. Okay, maybe firing's a little bit too extreme. Just tell them never, never do this ever again. <laughs> The reason why this probably ended up in the demo shop is the silk screen was just placed way too high and way too crooked, but it's kind of cool that it's the TV model that you see right there. But then instead of the bushing style tuners that have that really small footprint on the headstock, they went for the more modern style screw on style and it just ruins the entire vibe of the guitar. And it's not like they even did that to put locking tuners on it or something. It's just regular Grovers. It's like, why? Why would somebody do that? 
Now that I've pointed it out, doesn't it look so terrible from afar? Now, as far as cool custom finishes, here's one of the Trad Pro 5s, which is a Guitar Center exclusive. They did it up in green and gold. St. Patrick's Day kind of like vibes. But I couldn't tell. Is the neck still black or is it a dark green? Like, you can kind of see some green on the heel right here. So maybe that is actually black yet. But this one was pretty enticing. And this TV special doesn't look all that special. Most of you probably just skipped on right past it. But then look at that. They put a stinger on it for free. That was a good deal for somebody who's been wanting one of those. Another screaming deal was this 345, in left-handed nonetheless. So imagine you're a lefty, you always have to overpay for cool guitars. But to find one at 2700 bucks, a 345? I mean, look at this. A brand new one is 3600 and getting a full thousand dollars off on pretty much a brand new one, that's just unheard of in the lefty market. This Epiphone Casino ended up in the Gibson demo shop. It's the USA made version. They pretty much just put gold hardware on it, which made it look pretty cool. However, the neck heel on this one was absolutely disgusting looking. And I just thought this custom done up in wine red was a nice sight to see. We've been seeing so many exotic finishes and all black ones. It was just nice to see a plain, slightly flamed figure top Les Paul custom. Just like it was nice to see my favorite Gibson acoustic, the Dove. Nothing necessarily fantastic about this one, but you know, it's a Dove. And then check this out, a 57 reissue custom. So what makes a 57 custom different than like the 68 or the regular one is the fact that it actually has a mahogany top. So no maple tops on these guys, but look at the logo on these new ones, man. That is getting really good. I mean, compare it to an original 50s one, you can tell they're definitely getting pretty close on that. I think this is the first modern day 57 I've seen in a while, so that was definitely enticing. But now let's travel over to the European demo shop before we say goodbye today. There was a flying V in an olive drab green finish. We'll talk about this probably in another episode, but Gibson recently just announced a new custom color with their exclusives collection. But this one, they swapped out that neck pickup to a P94. Then I wanted to talk about this Firebird custom. I mean, it's listed as fair, the absolute lowest ranking you can give a guitar on reverb anyways. So I was kind of curious what was wrong with this thing. Look at the finish on the back of the neck doesn't look so bad in this photo. But look at it here. At first I thought, oh, is that a black sparkle that they're not advertising? No, that is like extreme orange peel, or maybe the finish got hot there. Something's just not right. That's like a blistered finish. And it's like that in multiple locations too. So I'm sure there's a lot of people in the comments going, oh, why would Gibson sell something like this? You gotta remember, this is their B-stock stuff. It's not gonna be perfect. They rejected this as a first and they're not selling it for brand new pricing. I mean, you can't fault Gibson for what people are willing to pay for these things. They're being upfront and honest. They say, hey, here's our price. If nobody buys it, they'll eventually lower it. So blame the market, don't blame Gibson. This acoustic was a pretty nice offering here. It's got an interesting back and just some nice woods in general. And lastly, they had a 67 reissue mahogany flying V. You don't see these too often. I mean, there's a lot of specs that make these interesting, but this one's like a candy apple red finish. I'd say the most unique factor about these flying Vs are the fact that they get the Melody Maker style Vibrolas on them. Now you can't put a Bigsby, Lonnie Mac style, but these are a little bit easier to do. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.